Hi, I'm Neil. This year in our research class, I was looking for a topic to write about, and I like mathematics, and I would like to study a major that includes mathematics in university. So I began to search for mathematicians, and I noticed that the greatest mathematicians was also the greatest philosophers, and the greatest philosophers was also the greatest mathematicians, like Plato, Arist Aristotle, Pythagoras, Euclid, Omar Hayam, and many more. Philosophers are the people who think a lot and they're looking for the ways how to become better people and improve their lives. So I believe that there's a connection between mathematics and philosophy because otherwise not that much mathematician would study philosophy or not that much philosopher would study mathematics. And in my research paper, I want to write about a topic like how can we become better people by using mathematics? But I noticed that this topic was very subjective, so I tried to find something more measurable. Then I found emotional intelligence. Then I chose my topic, the relation between emotional intelligence and mathematics. Emotional intelligence is the ability to understand your emotions and the emotions of others. According to psychologist Daniel Goleman, there are five components of emotional intelligence, and these are self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills. Self-awareness is to be aware of yourself. Self-regulation is to know how to regulate your harmful emotions and taking them under control. Motivation is the way you motivate yourself to achieve a goal. Empathy is the ability to understand others and sharing their feelings. Social skills are being able to build and maintain healthy relationships with others. The good part of emotional intelligence is that it is something that can be developed. And in my speech today, I want to focus on how can we improve our emotional intelligence by trying to understand mathematics. According to Galileo, mathematics is the language with which God has written the universe. So I want us to look at the things around us, at nature for example. Nature might seem very complex, non-mathematical and chaotic, meaning unpredictable. But there are some things in nature that mathematicians try to understand for millennia. And they're actually using mathematical language to interpret nature like a painter. And there's actually a balance in this seemingly chaotic nature, and this is called fractals. And fractals are all around us. They are in plants, uh, flowers, snowflakes, trees, river networks, lightning strikes, clouds, mountains. And we can create a fractal by taking a smooth looking shape and breaking it into pieces over and over again. And the whole of the fractal just looks like a part of it. Uh, mountains are also fractals. So this is how mountains are made in animations. It begins with a very simple geometrical shape, and we repeat that shape over and over again, and it becomes something complex. But in the beginning, it was actually something very simple. So fractals help us to understand how something complex is born out of something very simple. And these geometrical shapes are not just random geometrical shapes, but they follow some simple mathematical principles. And we can also see this mathematical principles in honeycombs. Bees build hexagonal honeycombs. They don't do this randomly, but it's because hexagon is the best shape to use the least material by having the biggest storage place. So what Mandelbrot did was actually to understand this balance and understand the seemingly non-mathematical geometrical shapes. And he figured out that they also follow some mathematical principles. And what mathematicians was doing for millennia was actually to understand this balance and order in, in nature by using mathematical language. And as we see this balance in nature, this is what we need in our lives. And this is actually what is key to emotional intelligence. Not doing too much, not too little, but doing just in the right amount of everything we do in our lives. And as we see it in fractals, we can make simple good choices every day, but over time it will not be a little thing. And even in this seemingly chaotic life, we can
try to focus on the things that we can actually control. Another thing we can learn from mathematics is its universal language. This is um, according to Brandt Russell. Mathematics is only the art of saying the same thing in different words. So mathematics has a universal language that is the same for every country, culture, religion, and gender. We can bring two different people from different parts of the world that speak different languages, and we can make them solve a math problem, and they can actually solve it without fighting. So even over time, the complexity of things changes. The principles of mathematics remains the same. It is easy to see us very different from each other, but mathematics is the connection between us. And mathematics focuses on the similarities between us rather than differentiating us. In one of my favorite TED Talks, Roger Antonsen, he's a mathematician in the University of Oslo, he has a claim that to be able to understand something, we need to look at it from different perspectives. And he explains his claim by focusing on mathematics. So in mathematics, there are different patterns. And when we look at these patterns from different point views, we can have a better understanding of mathematics. And this is the same thing for life. When we look at other people from their point of view, we can have a better understanding of them. And we can become more empathetic. So the concepts of mathematics does not come out of the blue, but all the concepts of mathematics has a basis, history, and justification for its existence. And all the concepts of mathematics are the consequences of the necessities of life. And mathematics can be used to solve the problems of life. What I believe is that we can also use mathematics to improve our emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is an important skill for us to become better people and have better lives. And by trying to understand mathematics, we can have a better understanding of some of the keys to emotional intelligence, such as focusing on the things that we can control, even in this seemingly chaotic life, keeping our balance of anything we do, we do in our lives, not doing too much, not too little, but just in the right amount of everything. And as we see it in fractals, we can make simple good choices every day, but over time, it will not be a little thing. And at last, by emphasizing with others, we can become socially more aware.